Hey YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It's Foul Play here, back for another modern leg. This time with Bant Bogles, uh, making the most of those card draw auras, Curious Obsession and Staggering Insight, and the interaction of Force of Negation. We'll only be running uh, two Hyena Umbra this leg, uh, pretty tight for spots in the main deck there with the two Aqueous form as well. Um, we'll also be running Prismatic Ending, which I'm pretty excited to try. Um, so... For most things you're going to be targeting, it's going to be a mana cheaper than much. Um, but we do have the potential to pay 5 mana for it with our mana confluences. And we are banned, so we have got the 3 colors prior to that. Um, Alright, with the sideboard, uh, we've got a solo path for big creatures like Merktide. Solo rest in peace, backing that up with double endurance. Uh, we've got the March in there as a two of for Urza Saga decks. Suddenly for Planeswalkers and for the Titan matchup. We've got our slip out the back to help give our creatures extra evasiveness. Slippery boys, super slippery boys. Force Negation, Lavinia, and Gadok Teague. Let's get into this one. Match number one against Vayne. Won the die roll on the play. Uh, no auras in this hand, so we're going to mulligan. Uh, this is still pretty medium. We can't really cast our force. We've got double Daybreak Coronet. No mana for Daybreak. No other auras to enable us. Uh, Alright, this one will do quite nicely. We'll keep this one. Uh, ditch Daybreak. And I'm going to ditch Rancor here. Get the nice synergy between Curious Obsession and Aqueous Form. We guarantee our mana, so we guarantee both auras down for next turn. Opponent into Esper Sentinel. Okay. This could be Hammer Time. Um, obviously, finding interaction wouldn't be the worst. It's not too bad so far, though. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and ignore the Esper Sentinel trigger. Uh, just so that we can lay down our auras here. So they only get one card at this stage. Attack, trigger, and... Let's see what we scry. Uh, forest can certainly go to the bottom. We can do better than that. Uh, we'll just set this one to always yes on the card draw. Prismatic ending, perfect. Let's go, poggers. Ink Moth Nexus, definitely hammer time. Stoneforge Mystic, sure thing, opponent. So if we hit land, we do have option to prismatic our opponent. Um, Memnite down. Tax for one with the Esper Sentinel. We'll go ahead and take that. Opponent still has a grip full, six cards in hand. Obviously, we did help them with one of those. Um, we could get rid of Stoneforge Mystic. I don't see much of a point. I'd rather deal with the hammer in question. Uh, I will pay one for this this time. So right now we really really need to dodge our opponent having uh, dodge our opponent having. Uh, the aura equip enchantment. Um, I feel like topping this should be okay. If they don't just kill us this turn, the incredible card advantage is going to be very beneficial to us. Uh, Sigata's Aid is the enchantment I'm thinking of. Um, if we dodge Sigata's Aid, we should be good. If not, we could just start at this infect damage right now. Oh, there's Sagata's Aid. Land into... Oh no, they're one mana short of that. That's fine. If our opponent is land screwed, I'd be very happy. Okay, they are not. Uh, so at this point, 
Wow, they're looking to go blocking route. We do have the aqueous form though, so I don't know if this is going to work the way my opponent intended. Alright, let's just attack and let them do their thing. We'll bottom our core spirit dancer. Interesting, they've not interacted there. Uh, so the plan now is to just force of negate what my opponent is casting. Although it looks like they're going to just uh, end of end of turn put the okay reality chip. That's okay still. I guess we prismatic and then we hold up force next turn. Yeah, okay, so we should be doing Prismatic there. That's a mistake by me. Opponent has another hammer on top. That's really unfortunate. Hopefully, he goes for the cast here. Hopefully, there's a misplay. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and cast this one. Uh, I think our opponent beats us with the second hammer anyway, the one on top of their library. Found courtesy of reality chip. Wait, I can't like fetch in response. Okay, that's super weird. I can't fetch in response to the Esper Sentinel trigger there for some reason. That doesn't seem right. Okay, cool. We'll see if that one comes off top, because if it's off top, this should su shuffle. So they just had two in hand. That's super poggers. Uh, cool. Alright, um, so definitely a misplay by not doing the prismatic ending there. Okay, so I'm looking at path, I'm looking at march. Um, potentially even looking at slip out the back. Maybe not. Maybe not slip. Um, Force of Vigor is really good though. Okay. Um, I'm not that impressed with Prismatic Ending, but it could be useful interaction at the same time. Of course, Spirit Dance is probably a bit slow for this matchup. I'm going to look to take both copies out. Uh, totem item uh, could come in handy. We've also got beside you as interaction too. That's a decent amount of interaction. All right, let's uh, let's trim on staggering insight a little bit here. And then I might just take out a basic forest. Might be leaving myself a little landlight. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Alright, so no creature on this one will mulligan. And this one's perfectly serviceable. Let's go ahead and keep it. Uh, I'll go ahead and bottom the second creature. Alright. Bogle pass. No Esper Sentinel for our opponent this time. Uh, that can only be good news for us. With the Mana Confluence here, we can probably look to start conserving our life total a little bit. Uh, alternatively, I can fetch green mana to try and enable um, <laughs> a really expensive Prismatic ending. But all our opponent's stuff is cheap. Has so he got Wear Tear here? Or um, disenchant. What the hell is going on here? Oh, March. Okay, sure. Opponent, um, March getting rid of blacksmith skill. Target creature gains hexproof indestructible. Okay, that's some tech. Um, that will not affect his equipment, though. 
All right, so here is Stoneforge Mystic. Getting Caldra complete. Oh, damn, that's a really tough one for us to deal with. Although, beside you is incredibly, incredibly well placed there. Uh, okay, sure. So we'll go ahead and destroy this Stoneforge Mystic. It'll help delay any uh, shenanigans our opponent has, and we'll get straight to attacking. And straight to drawing cards, which we desperately need because we've not got much going on. Uh, so he is splashing blue. Another Stoneforge Mystic? That's a bit Pogger's opponent. I wonder if this is a sideboard strategy um, that Hammer opponents have where they go and get... They sideboard in Caldra com Complete um, because they expect more grindy games 2 and 3. I mean, yeah, I'll just keep doing this. This is fine by me. Let's get rid of another Stoneforge. Hey, look, that's a pretty decent one. Uh, I don't see a huge reason to jam it out just yet, though. Uh, maybe we can. We're either shocking on holding up beside you. Uh, I think we just run call, actually. I don't really want to give that information away, you know what I mean? Third Stoneforge Mystic. Well, we don't have any more prismatic uh, endings left here. That's okay. Paradise Mantle this time. Okay. It's the Pure Steel Paladin. So we can Paradise Mantle and draw a card. He needs one more artifact though before he has Metalcraft. So next turn our opponent can do some pretty menacing stuff. We're still not attacking for a lot. Um, oh wow, that's a pretty decent one. Um, does this bounce creatures at all? Artifact enchantment, non-basic land. We've drawn like no auras here. Um, we're in a lot of trouble if our opponent blocks, but we're like, the Curious Obsession's dropping off if they don't. So I'm playing to a misplay here. Um, it looks like our opponent is <laughs> aiding us that misplay, fortunately. Uh, that can stay in hand, so now we can beside you and force. Okay. <laughs> we'll wait until attackers as well to do all our shenanigans. Cadre complete on the battlefield. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> The counter has got indestructible as well. Hmm. First strike, trample, indestructible, haste. And yeah. <laughs> and that little word of text which uh, is destroyer of creatures. Reality chip, sure. Pretty sure my opponent still has one hammer in hand. Oh, he's he's going for it. Don't you worry, opponent is going for this one. So in response to this equipment, uh, we go ahead and destroy. All right, 
we don't want to, we just want to cast this normally. Okay. So destroy both of these before the indestructible comes across. And our opponent can still Caldra on the Paladin, but that's not, or on the Memnite, sure. It's not the end of the world. We have got our opponent on eight as well. Um, if we draw Daybreak Coronet, we will technically have lethal. Oh, Shadow Spear, Jesus, man. He's drawing a lot off this Paladin. Um, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Hammer in hand or that would have uh, come down. Uh, and he's now got lifelink thanks to the Shadow Spear that they slow rolled. So we could have sequenced it differently and beside you and then destroyed the Hammer and Spear. So unfortunately our opponent gains life now that they otherwise wouldn't. I guess that's a misplay. Force of Negation. Alright, well, our play is attack here. Um, we haven't got much of a choice outside of that. Hopefully we draw something decent. March is pretty good. Um, so we can exile white cards. Two less. So, mana value XLS. So if we go for two, that'll cost us three mana. We don't have any legendary creatures, so beside you costs us the full amount. Uh, so it's going to be a choice between beside you or March, or we go for like a Shadow Spear here. Another Colossus Hammer for opponent. This time we've got the Force. Uh, Sagata's Aid is fine. Not fighting over the Sagata's Aid. Another Ink Moth Nexus. Holy smokes. Opponent's got the gas. Equipping Caldra to Ormanthopter. Uh, that's fine by me. Okay, and momentarily on Ornithopter, now it's on Ink Moth. Sure. Hammer. That's going to be forced. Cast by exiling the Bogle. Still got four cards in hand. This is insane. Now the Sagata's Aid. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Glad we didn't fight over that Sagata's Aid, which would have been pointless. Another hammer. Holy smokes, opponent. You just need to calm down, all right? All right, let's yield until our opponent attacks. Um... <laughs> Good old March to the rescue. All right, so one white mana deal with Ink Moth. Guess we can beside you in response there. <laughs> it's a thick ornithopter. Guess we should beside you in response there, otherwise we can lose our attack. 
and lose a curious obsession. Um, so that was misplayed from me. Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll eat that one on the chin. We need to do it in response. And then we can attack, draw two cards, and look for some interaction. Um, yeah, that's that's my bad. Last game it's all Stoneforge, uh, this game it's all Cigar to Zade. Um, nonetheless, I think our opponent does get it there. They can get double triggers off their equipments now. Springleaf Drum is not an equipment though. Alright, so we do have to block, and before damage, we'll beside you this Shadow Spear to stop Trample. Um, this allows us to see one more turn, but I don't think it's going to matter. He's not attacked with any of these side creatures, um, strangely enough, and... Yeah, it, it seems odd. He, he's got us beat regardless, but he's, like, lost two turns. We should have been dead last turn. Oh, he still has Trample? Never mind. Okay. Um, so the top of our library was nothing, so us drawing two cards with Curious Obsession would not have affected it. Um, that was unfortunate. We had good interactive elements, but overall we had a small creature, um, and it never got past a 4-2, and it didn't even have first strike. Uh, on to the next one. So match number two, lost the die, die roll here. Uh, no creature, so we mulligan this one. All right, we'll keep this, and I'm probably going to bottom a Rankle here. We've got plenty of them. Of course, Spirit Dancer could be handy later. Really what I'm missing is First Strike and obviously a second Mana Source. Steam Vents, uh, is it uh, Merktide? <laughs> Insolent Neonate. All right, so we've got a Dredge match up here. Um, if we can find our counter magic, it can be decent. Um, but we do have a lot of graveyard hate for games two and three, although given the fact it's steam vents, I'm not sure what the blue's for here. It's an odd primary color for them to have. I've known many dredge decks in the past to operate with, um, with Narco Amoeba, which is blue and one, but they never cast it. It just comes back from their graveyard. Opponent sacks the Neonate. Vengevine to the grave, on the discard. Hello one, hello, okay, and a cookbook, holy smokes. Opponent's crazy. Alright, we'll uh, go ahead and play out our ethereal armor and pass. That underworld cookbook is pretty useless against us. I mean, hey, core spirit dancer, but it's not our primary win con. Burning Inquiry. Uh, give me my hand back, man. Although land is nice. So we lose Rancor and Staggering Insight there. Oh, Blazing Rottweiler's back in modern. Terrifying people with that, uh, with that face of his. <laughs> no blocks. Daybreak Coronet. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just throw that one down. Our opponent shouldn't have main deck interaction here. Um, and traditionally against Dredge, when if you resolve an early daybreak, you normally win. I know this is Dredge Vine, um, but I feel like the premise is pretty much the same here. They've really not been able to fuel their graveyard properly either. Goblin Law. 
Sure thing, opponent. Wander. As long as Wanderer is in your graveyard and you control an island, creatures you control have flying. That's menacing. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the score mode. We, we won't go further than that. Um, yeah, I'm fine with our opponent doing that. That creature does nothing against us, especially in this position. Oh, you get some flying damage on me. I can't stop that opponent. Jammer Anchor, Jammer Curious, Attack. We get a card draw. And we do have Lethal here. Uh, one shot if once he blocks, so. Our opponent concedes. Would have drawn. And it's bugged. Never mind. All right, on to sideboarding. So, Graveyard Hate of Endurance. Um, and rest in peace. Very, very strong here. Uh, targeted removal is probably quite weak, like prismatic ending. I still like our counter magic, though. Of course, spirit dancer potentially slow on the draw. Uh, subtlety is a consideration. If we fog their creature spells, it could delay them a turn, which could be handy. Um, I think in general, it's probably a good matchup there, and it's probably overboarding. Uh, no creature, we mulligan. Fantastic looking spell suite, though. Uh, Spirit Dancer. This is like Precarious if he has Scorble, Tetra, Isofowl. I don't know. Um, I think I'll keep. I'll risk it. We're going to have plenty of card draw anyway, so I'll bottom the Obsession. We are up a game. We can risk it for that Biscuit. Although, being on the draw, this could be a death sentence. Hey, look, a Glade Cover Scout. Um, I'm definitely going to pivot and play my Glade Cover Scout because Pogs love to play that. <laughs> that's that's definitely lucky out right there. I do not deserve that creature. <laughs> not with this greedy hand. Goblin Law. Oh, he's gotten rid of the Ox and another Goblin Law. Draw another Bogle. Well, that wasn't as good as the first one. Ethereal Armor and Aqueous Form. We could take a turn off in Spirit Dancer, but there's just like no real reason. I like that card. I'm putting that on top. Uh, we won't draw it until next turn, but it still could come very in handy. Blood Moon. Hey, Force, what are you doing? You turn late, mate. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's beat our opponent the old-fashioned way, then. <laughs> that card is not a basic land. I'm going to put it on the bottom. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, that is not something I was expecting. Uh, I feel like even cashing this in right now on a Burning Inquiry could be worth it because, hey, like, hollow one. So we'll go ahead and throw that one away. Um, our opponent is rocking three colors as well. Uh, so Blood Moon's pretty daring from them. I suppose it's also uh, cyborg tech, though. Uh, technically I should leave Mana Confluence in hand, actually. That's a bit silly of me. Bottom Rankle. If I leave Mana Confluence in hand, it makes it harder for them to get our Force of Negation with a Burning Inquiry. That's an Ox. 
two venge vines to the grave. Hopefully he doesn't have another creature or those venge vines end us. Cookbook is fine. Oh no, Rottweiler. Please no. <laughs> no, I have the family. Come on, man. That's not right. <laughs> so return off Daybreak Coronet. That's the difference the play in the draw makes. Um, Blood Moon probably requires some attention here. If we draw a white mana, we almost win. Oh, Endurance is a turn late too. That's a shame. All right, we'll concede that one. I guess technically we can go on the blocking game and survive an extra turn. How many fetch lines have we got here? One Windswept, two Misty Rainforests, and then we've got three basic lands. So that's six basics. So that should net us one basic if we fetch conservatively. Net us like one and a half basics, right? Before he can play Blood Moon. There's potential that after showing Blood Moon, he's going to board some out as well. We do have Beside You as a main deck way to interact with Blood Moon too. All right, I think we just ignore Blood Moon and rock the same strategy. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I will keep. <laughs> There's no playing around Blood Moon with this hand, but uh, it's got some very, very good stuff going on. I will risk it. Opponent miles to six. Looks like they've chosen to keep six. So Hallowed Fountain here for us allows us to cast our auras in hand and our creature. Insolent Neonate, that is okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Aqueous Form here. I think the Scry to land is more important than the one extra damage for the turn. That is not land. I will bottom. Super unfortunate being... Um, Mana choked on a hand with, well, it was two two mana cards, but now it's three with the core. It like really disrupts tempo a lot in those like two plus mana cost aura hands. Uh, all right, so our opponent's gonna do stuff. Yep, Spirit Dance is pointless now. Hey look, they got a cookbook. And they played a cookbook, sure. Endurance, that is not the card I'm looking for. Although, it offers good interaction with my opponent's graveyard. So, I'll take that. <laughs> Fucking bottoming ethereal armor, yikes. No Venge Vines for my opponent this time, hopefully. We'll get it done with our, uh, our sm small but irritating bagel. Rottweiler, sure. You can have all the Rottweilers in the world. I don't care about those ones. Hello one, sure. It's a pretty tame turn. Alright, um, still no land. <laughs> we'll uh, jam that Curious Obsession though, get some card draw happening. Jesus, man. <laughs> it's like a bit wild from our deck. 
All right, so we'll say always yes to that trigger. Hey, look, mana, let's go. Um, no creature, but daybreak next turn if we survive. Uh, we should hopefully survive. And if we survive, Daybreak Coronet will take us up to 9 power for next turn, thanks to the Ethereal Armor. And we have Unblockable, so it will be victory. Planet too scared to crack. Activate only once a turn. Yeah, cool. Thank goodness. So 10 damage from our opponent puts us to 3. Lightning Bolt range. Magic Gods hopefully have different plan in store though. Oh, opponent gaining life. Yeah, that's, that's a play. Um... Seems surplus to requirements, I believe. I think drawing land and playing a bogle would be more beneficial, potentially. We draw a curious obsession anyway, after bottoming one. Uh, that's A-OK. -okay. We're still in a really good spot here. Um, opponent can potentially give flying to all his creatures and attack us, but we do have the endurance to help counter that. Oh, Vengevine to the grave. <clears throat> Opponent concedes. All right, let's go. We're uh, one and one. Match three, won the die roll on the play. We'll be keeping this hand. We need an extra mana for our Daybreak Coronet. Definitely a good starting point, though. Uh, we're versing Kenkian here, PC Kenkian. Just reminds me of Princess Peony from South Park. Triome. All right, so that is a team of Triome. I think I got my colors right. Curious Obsession. Yeah. Hell yeah. Jam that. Jam that damn aura straight onto that creature. Um, potentially, I should be holding off on Dried Arbor and looking for another land drop off Obsession. Hopefully, it doesn't come back to bite us, though. So. Alright, didn't make a difference. Lovely. Oh. Staggering Insight on top. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cast an Ethereal Armor for protective purposes here. Opponent looks like they're just skipping through to end step or something. Hey, look, a Hallowed Fountain. That's pretty spicy. I'm going to go ahead and cast a Curious Obsession. Cast a Scout and pass the turn. All right, so that's good. Protection against Kaya Guile antics. Opponent didn't end of turn crack Misty Rainforest. Does that mean that they're uh, a little bit land light, perhaps? All right, now they're fetching basics. Does that mean Blood Moon is coming our way? No. Shardless Agent. Oh, uh, this is living and that's really not good. Okay, it's Rhinos. We have a chance. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look at these cards later on. I'm just going to shrink them for now.
So we can deal a lot of damage, gain a lot of life, but our opponent can just easily chump block this. Uh, Prismatic Endings can exile Rhinos for one mana. Our opponent does not know how First Strike works. I'll take it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, they could potentially have another one and some more Rhinos on the way, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. All right, shame concession. I like it. <laughs> I'm not sure that we have all that much in our library for our opponent's deck. Um, if they have Living End, that could be an issue. Because Teague and Lavinia aren't really going to interact here. We have main deck Force. Question is, does he pivot to Living End? And if he does, that's potentially an issue. Um, what other ways can our opponent interact? Blood Moon is a pretty big one. Especially seeing the colours that we saw. I don't think we need to be concerned about... Oh, Slip Out the Back could be good assurance, actually. Because if our opponent does transition to Living End, we can flicker our own creature and save it and save the auras. Okay. I'm down to bring those in just in case. Um, cards we want to take out. So Prismatic Ending is just going to be pretty slow. It can help deal with Blood Moon, but we've got... Force of Vigor and Beside You to do that anyway. And I'll probably just bring out the Cool Spirit Dancers as well. Uh, submit and get into it. Yeah, perfect. We'll keep. <laughs> Snap keep. So thinking about sequencing land here, we can potentially get a basic. Hmm. Our island's kind of annoying because it stops us from double aura on turn two. For, so a fetch shock might be in order. We'll see what we draw. We draw a beside you. I think we fetch shock for tempo. I could go just for Rancor here. Getting that first strike's really important, though. Alright. <clears throat> okay, I was going to be very upset if that, that hit a mystical dispute. As a scout, unfortunate. Beside you will let us double aura and then we have force of vigor to interact. All right, let's play the beside you. I think it's important to be aggressive here. Uh, there's no way for us to hold up force of negation regardless. So. All right, so opponent pitches Brazen Borrower to a force of negation there. Uh, we'll resolve that Hyena Umbra and attack. Interesting. Three cards in hand for opponent. Still not fetching. Yeah, this really smells like a Blood Moon, but we do just have the Scout to answer no. Misses Land Drop. Gosh, I'm sorry for our opponent. Their hand must be very, very iffy. Although... After that rancor is gone, we're uh, hidden like a wet noodle here with our bogle. All right, we'll go in for that two damage. <laughs> our uh, our manner is like so embarrassing <laughs> here right now. Um, what do we do? I guess we play dried arbor, attack. <laughs> Maybe I should have played Dryad Arbor last turn. It 
it allows us to attack for an extra one point of damage, but we can hard cast force, which might, which might be relevant. Uh, oh, opponent's finally cashing these in. Uh, this is during his turn. There's the Shardless Agent. <laughs> Suppose if he brought in Blood Moon, it would sort of interfere with his plan, right? Um, well, not really. No, never mind. I, I'm a foolish fool. All right, we hit White Manor. We're back in a good spot. I'll give us five power. Oh, that's not quite enough to attack, actually. Um, hmm. All right, let's pass the turn. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're praying to the mana gods at the moment because our mana is poop. Violent Outburst. Uh, that is A-OK, -okay, opponent. I did say I was going to look at our opponent's uh, cards last game. Yeah, so here's the Blood Moons. So that raid was right. Uh, he goes for some more Rhinos, though. A little buff on these these little fatties over here. Attack with the Shardless Agent, please, opponent. Rats. Seeing through the master plan there. Alright. We'll be in an okay spot if we hit White Manor. We need to hit it, though. That's an expensive way to get to White Manor, but I'll take it at this point. Uh, we'll make sure we get Hallowed Fountains, so later down the line we can hard cast our Force Negation as well. Alright, so this is exactly enough to take out a Rhino and a Shardless Agent, um, which means that we're not getting hit back for 6. So we needed that Curious Obsession point, otherwise attacking here was not going to work. Opponent denies the card draw. So they've currently got 16 damage on crackback. We can block four of it and gain six life. Um, so <laughs> 16 damage minus four, 12. So that's six. So he'll deal net six damage to us. Uh, I think we leave Glade Cover Scout in hand. Of course, our opponent can Petty Theft, either they break Coroner or the Rhino to token that we're blocking, and then that becomes problematic. But there's no way to play around that. Violent Outburst. Do we want to counter the actual spell here? We can't. We don't have blue mana, a blue card to pitch. <coughs> this is a lot of Rhinos. So that's 15 damage, and we gain 6 at first strike speed, so not, net 9 damage. Yikes. We got a 1. <laughs> Can block with the Dried Arbor as well. Uh, we can block next turn, probably. Alright, I'll, I'll take my 1 damage, 1 life. <laughs> It's the only point that matters, right? Your last life point. Alright, that's one big brick. Uh, let's go ahead and attack for a little bit. Probably not enough. We're not taking their own damage off the board here as well. <coughs> so opponent currently nets six damage again. If they violent outburst for a fourth time, sorry, um, that will be enough to kill us though. 
So if we block with an extra two, that will take us to exactly zero. So we can't beat Violent Outburst. Um, I think we scout anyway. Um, I think Force of Vigor, like it can interact with Blood Moon, but we either like win or lose here. I don't think Force is gonna affect it. Like we survive this turn or we win. Alright, we'll block as much damage as possible. We could be throwing away those creatures for free, but we do have to play around um, Petty Theft. Okay, we gain life. Excellent. That puts us in a really good spot. The Rhinos are dwindling. We can always force a Blood Moon too. Or draw a green card and remove it during our opponent's next turn. Alright, perfect. They pass to us. We find slip out the back. Um, okay. I don't think that's going to be super useful here. Although we can slip a token. We can target our opponent's creature. So maybe it is going to be useful. Equis form. Alright, let's hold that in hand. <clears throat> Opponent going for that attack. We'll block here. I don't think we need to use slip out the back in this spot. It's almost worth just holding defensively in case all goes wrong. Opponent concedes. Uh, lovely. Next card was going to be a mana confluence, uh, but we did all we needed to get there. Match 4, lost the die roll, versing a rainbow. No auras, so I'm going to mulligan for better. It's looking a lot better, let's go ahead and keep. <clears throat> uh, I think we can probably bottom the breeding pool here. That allows us triple aura and the double white to cast daybreak. Fine beside you, don't mind a little beside you. Alright, steam vents in tapped. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, let's see what our opponent does to a rancor here. What is the response opponent? Could be facing a counterspell deck. Alright, there's the counterspell. It's fine by me. We'll shock in this hallowed fountain. Curious obsession. Attack and get this card draw engine happening. Opponent could have Force of Negation, um, and then we'd just have to hope for a Staggering Insight next turn. So no Force. We draw the Scout. A bit of a dead draw. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of dead draws. Alright. Um, So the play is Staggering Insight. Opponent rock, Roxy Archmage's Charm. It's okay, that stops him from drawing two cards later on, or at end of turn. So we'll attack for two. Draw a card, keep that <laughs> impressive gravy going. Um, all right, let's let's get our little backup guy here just in case things go wrong. I was gonna hold beside you, but we miss land drop and uh, auras are dwindling. Spirits, however, less so. 
shocked in steam vents. Is that indicative of a cryptic command from our opponent? If he had cryptic, he could make curious obsession fall off. And if he makes curious obsession fall off, he can make daybreak fall off. Uh, subtlety, hard cast. Okay, that's an annoyance. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> daybreak, uh, no. <laughs> Alright, so we're pu uber punished for not playing the Daybreak there. Uh, we'll play this one in tapped, and we'll unload on some creatures. Maybe our opponent will loosen up after that and be less permissible. <laughs> I doubt it though, because this looks like a uh, blue-red control, blue moon, maybe. Expressive iteration, okay. Maybe, maybe it's a... It, it's got to have... Merktide Regent, if it's running this right. Or maybe it just, it's that good a card that it doesn't matter. That, like, any old control deck can just run it, because, you know, like, almost a two-mana brainstorm in a way. I know the effect's very different. It doesn't shuffle cards from your hand back in, but you see three cards, you get two of them. Mm. All right, Misty Rainforest from Exile to play. Mm. I smell another Archmage's charm here. His opponent not attacking. Yikes. Mm. All right, well, we could do some aura action real soon. Consider. Sure. I don't think we want to fight over or consider with our force. Something else. Slam a Jace or something, man. Just tap out for a Jace. You know you want to do it. Wow, we, we could not be drawing more dead here. Okay. Um, close to conceding. <laughs> it's like... Archmage's Charm. Subtlety. Okay. So now he attacks with one and then holds the other upright. Is he still playing defensive? Okay, he's getting offensive. Opponent's loosened up. Dude. Holy smokes, this is getting beyond a joke. <laughs> Alright, like, we're going to hope for a good games 2 and 3 here. Really, we haven't seen much of our opponent's deck outside of subtlety. There's a lightning bolt. Um, I guess we should have countered lightning bolt, but maybe it doesn't matter. Alright, we concede. Sideboarding. What do we want? I don't think prismatic ending is very useful. Path could come in handy, but I'm not so sure. Lavinia is probably semi decent. Gadok Teague could be useful. On the off chance that they're a Merc, Merc Tide deck, is that what it's called? Um. Dealing with their graveyard, keeping that in check so they don't get a massive flying creature could be worthwhile. Alternatively, we could subtlety to time walk them if they go for it. Not worried about... Board sweepers here. They could have Anger of the Gods, and we'll just have to try to get past that as quick as we can. They do have Blood Moon. We have Counter Magic. We're on the play. We have Beside You's in deck. I think Force is overboarding. Let's submit this, just with the Lavinia and the Teague. Uh, I'm going to mulligan that. Uh, we'll keep this one, bottom the Dried Arbor. 
Keep bottom done. So we do get the play this time. Previously we were on the draw. Tempo is pretty significant when you play Vogels. Uh, let's walk into a Blood Moon and Curious Obsession. Need to get card draw happening so we can get our first strike happening and etc. Mystical Dispute. Uh, Alright. <laughs> Why you gotta do me dirty like that opponent? That's the downside to blue is uh, you run that risk. And if we win this and keep a Bogle hand, we risk getting turn one disputed on the Bogle. Which is pretty terrifying. Now we're, uh, yeah, <laughs> good, good team. <laughs> we're drawing hot right now. <laughs> wow, Snapcast a mage opponent. Oof, I, it's been a while since I've seen Snappy. Hopefully, it means we can get a wild core spirit dancer going and that our opponent does not I repeat does not have force negation here. Okay. Ah uh, well we draw another scout off that man. These draws have been embarrassing. Come on, deck. Give us some gravy. It's not even like the force pitchable hexproof creature. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Deck, for your assistance in our dire time of need. Um, honestly, let's just uh, start jamming some creatures onto the battlefield. Because <laughs> we might as well get some points of damage out of them. Cool. <laughs> All right, we got seven damage on the board. Who needs auras when you have an army of one one hexproofers? <laughs> Consider then crack. Uh, I didn't keep track on whether or not they put it into the graveyard or not. It's possible. Consistent. Yeah, they would have had to have put Island there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is pretty sad at the moment. You would think there's, like, a count of zero auras in the deck with how this is going. And with Spirit Dancer, you get one aura, bam, you snap it, you start drawing cards, things happen. Um, it doesn't happen with Hexproof Creatures, unfortunately. So our opponent like subtlety blocking, um, or like cryptic bouncer core spirit dancer, because that resets this a draw. They could have subtlety after bouncing spirit dancer to put it on top. Or like double snapcaster mage block block. What? Targets consider. Sure. That's not bad value. <laughs> we put our opponent to three. All right. All right. Random attack and wide. Let's go. One more turn. We can do it. Let's get there. Um, hopefully, if our opponent's got cryptic command... They let us draw into Force and Negation, and then we're happy boys. Oh, 
they're casting something during their turn. Oh, it's a Merc Titan. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Get on that creature right now. Uh, I should be using Temple Garden. I forgot I had Dried Arbor there. Alright, we'll um, start going wide a little bit here. I should have put that on one of the other creatures as well. Just in case I had Petty Theft to bounce the Core Spirit Dancer. Uh, okay, I hope we don't lose because we tapped our mana inoptimally. In Fuck. <laughs> We can put our opponent to one by suicide attacking the scout, uh, and that's definitely worth it. So yeah, that's all greed from uh, not putting the hyena umbra on one of my other creatures there. I needed to think that through. If that cost me the game, it's entirely my fault. We had the win. All right, opponent is attacking us. Does do I smell a cryptic command here? Is that what's happening, opponent? On one, or are they just going down firing? All right, we draw staggering insight this time. Uh, so let's go ahead and make our slippery boy unblockable. I will crack this, get a planes, give him some card draw too, because why not? Rancor, sure. We could just be giving our opponent information here. Um, or they could just like cryptic tap us and then lightning bolt us next turn for the victory. All right, that's a pretty lame start opponent. Uh, we've already played a land, so that's going to be it for now. Alright, so we'll pray no Lightning Bolt and no second Merc Tide to grow the first one. Because they can Merc Tide Exile 2, so that's 7 mana will be 5. They've got 4 mana there, but they can't crack. So it would have to be basic land or an Ottawire or something. And legend will win correctly. Float the mana and go. Oh, they're contemplating. We might might have a chance. All right, here comes Snappy. Snappy. Uh, oh, finds fire. Apparently, it took a while to come up with that line. Okay, <laughs> it's uh, more than lethal. Rats. Um, Alright, so that's on us for getting greedy with how we placed our auras. Uh, we should have won that a turn earlier and taken it through. Uh, through to a third match. Alright, so the final match of this league. Versing Sanatuita. And uh, we lost the Daryl here. It's a Urian deck. I like the aggression of our auras. I'm going to go ahead and keep this. load up our poster boy on view for all to see. Slotted strand, sure. Ragavan. Okay, we're versing a Urian and Ragavan deck. Got you opponent. Hmm. 
All right, well, uh, getting our hands on some Vigilance would be really nice to keep Raghavan in check. Uh, if we had a second Hexproof creature, I would probably actually block and trade this off. Uh, but as we do not, our opponent is going to get beautiful mana and card advantage all game. What did they get from that? Oh, an Ethereal Armor. Lovely. Oh, they chose not to play the Ethereal Armor? Okay. I'll, um, I'll cease my complaining on that. Uh, I can't be conservative with my life total. The most conservative I can be is using Mana Confluence. So, yeah, because I don't like Fetch Shock taking us to 12 in this position when we're down a turn by being on the draw. Uh, this is the best we're gonna have to do here. Counterspell. Alright, we'll just leave up blockers then. Um, we don't have to attack. <laughs> oh, okay. Just have it all, opponent. God damn it, man. <laughs> One card left in hand. All right, stuff this. I'm I'm trading and I'm going in on Spirit Dancer with Aqueous Form. If I get bowled over from doing that, then so be it. But you know, he's one card in hand. Let's roll the dice. Let's roll the dice a little. Okay, that's a pretty good card. <laughs> One card turns into many suddenly. Oh no. <laughs> ah damn, we hit Daybreak, but we don't have the mana off of that uh, conserving of life the other turn. It's a shame. Bottom the mana confluence. Force negation? Oh man. <laughs> A little nervous <laughs> right now. Opponent concedes. All right, the gambit gets there. The uh, the the bogle gambit gets there. Let's go. Um, all right, so it's a Raghavan deck with counter magic. So it's probably Raghavan Merktide. Cards like March and Path can play a part here. Her opponent is spewing to be losing to that. Um, I think Prismatic Ending is stronger than March. And Path is pretty reasonable because it deals with Merc Tide. I think we can trim on beside you. I'll trim a core. And maybe one march is enough. Not entirely sure how to sideboard optimally for this matchup. I have not played it enough. This is in fact my first time playing it. No creature mulligan. Sure, I'll... Uh, it's a little bit iffy. It's not good into Raghavan. Opponents kept a six. We could go to five. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna mulligan again. All right, I'm just gonna mulligan to death. Keep this. Uh, hands like this, one land will do, and we'll keep this. That'll that'll do us. Oh, Triome, no turn one, Ragavan. Sure. All right, so here the play is... I'm sure my opponent's going to hold up Counterspell. Maybe not. Maybe he's dashing Ragavan. Temple Garden. Renin 6. Sure. <laughs> uh, we can kill this. <laughs> Oh, 
Or we can just start drawing cards and fixing our position. I think let's ignore Ren and Six. Boom. The race has begun. Oh, Daybreak Coronet. That's like a spicy meatball. <clears throat> Teferi? Or is this more of an Elementals deck like, that's just also running Raghavan? Prismatic ending. Boo, opponent. I hate you. <laughs> opponent can't have counterspell they're uh, only floating one blue mana here alright get in there slippery boy 8 damage let's go Beside you on the ethereal armor, man. Uh, it might be worth playing around Blood Moon here. We'll get a second blue source. Hmm. So opponent can reoccur beside you with Renin Six. Uh, that's not good. Rot Roy Raggy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I did not think of that interaction. Though, to be fair, we didn't see uh, beside you in the first game. Hopefully, our opponent does not know the interaction of making Daybreak fall off. They've also given us the Vigilance attack here, which, I mean, doesn't mean too much. Damn, they know the interaction. I'm going to stop playing around Blood Moon a little bit. Alright, opponent, are you going to crack that? Perfect. So, in response... Oh, we can't target Planeswalkers. Shit. Um, do we go after their land? Fuck. <laughs> this is Prismatic Ending. We'd be able to destroy Planeswalkers. Uh, jokes on your opponent. We haven't got any auras here. Oh, no. Jokes on us again. <laughs> Alright, exile a graveyard. Oh, did he not exile a graveyard? Okay. Be gone, Mr. Endurance. Uh, I think game three I'll be taking March out. It's probably a fair assessment, assuming it's going to a game three as well. Emblem. Uh, that can only mean he has another run in six. So I think with Retrace, they can play Instant Spade. Yeah, that's it. Keep, keep uh, littling down your own life total opponent. I'll take that. Oh, it's a hand. Rats, if we drew Aura there, we could have Aura Daybreaked 1. Now we have to constantly play around our opponents beside you, uh, which is probably just game. Eight cards in hand for them. <laughs> Oh, he taps out for Urian. Uh, if he doesn't play land, we have a chance. We can hit unblockable and win here. Uh, this pains me so much, man. Mm. 
Maybe he taps out for something else? Opponent <laughs> mm. should be a pinging face with Ren, I think. Hey, look, a slippery boy. <laughs> We're uh, one creature closer to attacking our opponent. Counter spell, all right. I'm gonna slow roll that one. I don't play to beside you, which probably means there's one in hand. Um, all right, if we draw dead here, I might just concede the game. Get rid of our opponent's triome, just because. Uh, make a land come in tapped or something. Alright, we can see this and go to the next game. Um, with a full group of seven, it's probably unwinnable. Um, Alright, so March seems kind of weak. Prismatic ending seems kind of weak. I mean, they just assumed full control deck mode there. Path seems kind of weak. Um, I, I'm going to bring in Endurance and rest in peace and probably slip out the back. Slip out the back will help us play around our opponent's prismatic endings. Um, we can bring it on Teague as well for that. One aqueous form should do. Um, all right, I'm going to go down to zero aqueous forms. We should win most games without it, even if it takes an extra turn. All right, we'll mulligan. Uh, it's kind of medium we'll keep, though. Uh, we'll play our lands so that we can have... Slip out the back to protect Curious Obsession. Bottom Island. I want to have, like, double of both colors here. Oh, there's the Raghavan. He's, uh, he's back to steal the show this time. Oh, that's super, super annoying. Alright, um, I can't really attack. So, playing Teague here just shuts off Prismatic Ending. We could offer the trade on the Raghavan. Uh, it looks like they're going for Renin 6 now. They don't have Counterspell mana and they're not playing... They didn't fetch f into a Counterspell then. Um, Alright, let's... Curious Obsession. Uh, we should be attacking with both. I don't know why I didn't. We've missed two points of damage there. Uh, so we can slip out the back to counter the effect. I think our hand is just weak enough that I'm actually going to do that. All right. All 
Let's get that off the table. I, I'm changing my mind about it. Force negation is kind of nice. Instant speed endurance is also nice. Awesome. We deal damage, we draw a card. That's a pretty massive respite. I don't see a rush to play that. What is our opponent doing? Memory del deluge. Look at the top X cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom in any order. Um, so, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell. So here, look at the top four cards, putting two of them into his hand and the rest on the bottom. Um, this could be a good one to counter. Although it's not the problem card, but they can have creatures that can become problem cards. Uh, I'm going to opt to counter it this time. Expressive iteration, sure thing. I'll move this over here. With these like exile cards, I think they always default this way a bit. Alright, not that one. Revealed. Prismatic ending. Well, that sucks, man. Rancor? That doesn't suck. Alright, let's lay down some pressure. Put our opponent to nine. They're not fetching like a deck that has Blood Moon, by the way. Um, they weren't doing it in the game two either. Daybreak Coronet. So we can jam for lethal, attack for the win. Um, I think playing Patience okay here. We do have the instant speed endurance as well. Cycling. Maybe I should have upkeeped this. I think draw step is wrong. We'll see if we bait, bait a counter here. I guess I'm also playing into Supreme Verdict at the moment, so I should just be doing this end step, upkeep or end step. Most likely end step. Uh, if he's Supreme Verdicts, we do have Totem Armor, though. Ice Fang Quattle. And they concede. Alright, so we get the 3-2. Um, I don't think I played optimally by any stretch. Um, hmm. Give me a minute to think. All right. Um, so as far as everything is concerned, um, I think the deck performed reasonably well. I think I liked the main deck more than I liked the sideboard. Um, I didn't actually mind the inclusion of Core Spirit Dancer instead of Invisible Stalker. So Invisible Stalker was a card that Previously, when I was playing Bant, I always included over Core Spirit Dancer, and today that just wasn't the case. Um, I think Core Spirit Dancer has been impressing me a little bit as of recent, um, so I'll continue to test it for a while. As far as the spell pass package in the main deck is concerned, I think I mostly liked my aura base, and... I think four to six 
uh, non-aura, non-creature spells. Four to six interactive spells is probably correct. I really like Force of Negation. Um, with all these prismatic endings running around, it could be possible that either we need to include more blue cards in the deck to enable Force, or that maybe even Stubborn Denial is a better inclusion. Um, Stubborn Denial is better at finding like a counter spell during your turn. So if I'm trying to resolve a turn three Daybreak Coronet and I've got a blue mana off to the side, um, it's much easier to get past something like Counterspell. I think Force of Negation is very, very useful, um, but we didn't see too many matchups where it comes in clutch. Um, we didn't see our opponent doing a Living End. Um, we didn't come up against Tron. So... If the metagame's away from those kinds of spells, uh, it could be possible that we could move some of these Force of Negations to the sideboard um, and maybe look to interact a little bit differently. <clears throat> Additionally, I wasn't overly impressed with Prismatic Ending, um, so I think March is a better main deck inclusion for the interaction uh, with opponent's land, um, in particular interaction with Urza's Saga. We didn't come up against it today, um, but, you know, any other day and you could verse it. Sideboard-wise, I was less happy. I felt like I had less of a plan and more of I was just trying to include everything and spells didn't really have much of a place. Um... It's possible that I should be running more Path to Exiles in the sideboard and scrapping Prismatic Ending. Um, as you can see, slots are sort of tight. It could be that Teague and Lavinia just aren't that well placed. Uh, maybe Lavinia is better, but when we've got Counter Magic, having a card like Gadok Teague is possibly less necessary, especially, like, I know Prismatic Ending's running around, but if we've got Stubborn Denial to help interact with that, I feel like that's an idea. At the moment, it seems to me like Modern isn't super fast. There's a lot of grindy interaction, high-value decks, um, but I'm not getting turn 3 comboed continuously, or turn 2 comboed. Um, that's, that's my justification for force maybe being moved to the sideboard. Um, and maybe we could even cut it down to a three of. If I continue to not like March in the main deck, it's potential that we can actually bring in slip out the back into the main deck. And I, I do rate this card really, really highly. It is a combat trick, but it is a combat trick that solves a lot of what Bogle's problems have been as of recent. Um, and that's it. It's easy for our opponents to interact with us these days. Um, main deck interaction has been increasing significantly. And I mean, slip out the back if we can avoid that blast zone. It saves all our auras, um, not just our two mana auras, assuming that blast zone on one, we have totem armor. Um, but it will save all our auras. It will stop our creatures from getting sacrificed. Um, and yeah, I, I think Slip Out the Back solves a lot of problems. Um, there was a three mana creature from the Dungeon Dragon set, which does something similar, but it's three mana. Um, and that's a lot to hold up. And it wasn't that particularly impressive with the stats either. Subtlety, I didn't really get to play it here. It could be that I should be bringing this in against um, Merktide decks, slash Ragavan Merktide decks against Elemental decks. Um, I think maybe I just need to be a bit more proactive bringing this in. Lavinia is still good, uh, because it reads, it's asymmetrical, so it only affects our opponent, it does not affect us, and opponent can't cast non-creature spells greater than the mana value, with mana value greater than the number of lands they control, i.e. it stops our opponent turn, uh, our Tron opponent turn three carning. Um, and it also stops 
Living Index from... Because uh, its second effect says, when an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. So I'm a big fan of Lavinia. Um, I think maybe a two of in the sideboard even. And... Uh, as far as everything's concerned, maybe... I don't want to drop path entirely. I think maybe slip out the backs to the main deck. Two marches, just go bye-bye for now. And then we add a second path to the sideboard. Although, hmm, having having one march is a little bit low to me. I feel like it should be two. Um, well, let's go like that. Let's cut an aqueous form. And I think this is the pretty good makings of a main deck here. So seven interactive spells, <laughs> a combat trick, which is unheard of in Constructed, um, and a pretty sweet cyborg package. So we'll leave the video there, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, what do you think of my choices for the deck and cyborg here? Um, until next time, have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.